This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Amanda Kucherik from Besser Museum. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Nancy. So now your doors are open um, since the governor lifted restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you have only a certain amount of people that can be inside at one time. Yes. Um, so we do have certain restrictions now. Um, we do recommend that if you know that you're going to be coming ahead of time, um, give us a call. And um, then we can put your name on a list just so that we know that there's going to be okay. a certain amount of people uh, in the building. But the number that we have uh, for the building is 25. Okay. Um, and then the planetarium uh, also has restrictions in terms of their numbers. Uh, and so I'd say about 12 is the number that we try to fit in there. It's, it's hard with those seats like that. It's, it's like being in a smaller theater space. With it all enclosed, we want to make sure that that area is nice and clean for okay. our guests and you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, so as long as you give us a call ahead of time, that kind of helps us to prepare. Uh, we do allow for walk-in as well. Okay. Um, so that's okay if you just show up too. Um, but what we do is we just uh, count to make sure that we're not okay. over that 25 number. Um, okay. Usually uh, it's, it's pretty all right, but on the weekend sometimes it gets busy, so it's just nice to know. Um, uh, if there's going to be the, that amount of numbers. And now I know in the spring you were so excited about your spring season. You had yes. so many wonderful things lined up and that all stopped yeah. because of the virus. So mm -hmm. what's happening now? Uh, so we still have uh, artist Noelle Skiba's work up. Uh, so she's got some really vibrant colors yes. that are in our back large gallery. Uh, and that's all floor to ceiling paintings. It's really amazing if you've never uh, been in to see that work. Uh, really impressive uh, oh, yes. feel the work that she's got and so that's a, a retrospective so it's looking at a lot of her pieces from when she was younger to uh, pretty current pieces too wow. so that's pretty neat um, and then we also have the uh, NEMAG so the Northeast Michigan Artists Guild uh, show um, that's pretty frequent in the springtime we'll do uh, the NEMAG shows so um, this year the theme is journeys and so the pieces that are along the walls of that gallery are part of that journeys exhibit uh, but they also have their really big art sale which is an annual Ooh. summer sale that we do now because uh, you know art on the on the bay uh, is not happening this year and there's a lot of art festivals that aren't happening this year it's a really great time to come in if you're looking for some art for uh, your office or your home, uh, lots of really great prints that you can pick up uh, for a discounted price. Right, and unique items for gifting Absolutely. or like you said for decor that you wouldn't be able to find somewhere else mm -hmm. and by local people. Absolutely, yes, and so that is great. And uh, Nimeg has people of all different types of artists. Ooh. So you've got painters, there's photographers, uh, people who are new to being art makers, and people who've been doing it for many years. So uh, it also kind of helps you, it makes you feel good well, when you're supporting yes. those local artists. Yes, very good. And the planetarium yes. is open, so what shows are we going to see now? Uh, so we do actually have a new show. And okay. so this was something that we were excited about in the spring, and uh, we weren't able to roll it out in quite the way that we were hoping, but uh, hoping that people will still enjoy it. Um, we have a new history show. Uh, it talks about World War II. So if you're interested in seeing something like that in a planetarium style dome, that's really neat. Um, it's a lot of, uh, it's sort of like being in uh, one of the theaters where you're all surrounded by the images all around you. Uh, some of it is CGI, some of it is photography. Um, it's a really immersive history experience. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then just the regular stuff you can come to the museum for, too. Yes, absolutely. Um, also in the planetarium, we have our regular um, Michigan Skies live show. Ooh, That's something okay. that people are always interested in. That talks more about the local stars. Um, I just wanted to mention that because it's usually at a specific time every day. So if you check out on our website or uh, the Facebook pages, you'll be able to see a full schedule that'll give you all of those shows and it'll tell you which time of the day those shows will be. Um, so that I wanted to make sure people get to see, but also on our website is all of our regular things, like okay. you're saying. So uh, if you haven't been to see the Native American exhibit in a while, um, really fascinating stuff there. Um, our village, you're not able to go into the buildings right now, but because the weather is so right. great, it's so lovely to be able to walk around the backyard there and experience you know, what you can see of the architecture out there. Um, the Catherine V, the fishing vessel that's out there right. is, is accessible. You can go check that out. 
uh, and our fossil parks are accessible. Oh, yay. So that's something great if you're looking for something to do in the afternoon. Uh, we have the fossil park that's accessible through our backyard. Okay. So if you're a museum guest, you can come on through there. Um, and we also have the other side of the fossil park that's accessible through the parking lot. So if you're just passing through and you need something to do for a little bit, uh, you can check that out. That's really, you know, easy to go to. Uh, all of that fossil fill comes from, you know, Lafarge spec stone quarries. It's all local. Uh, everybody wonders if we've just planted the fossils right out there, but no, they're they're really easy to find because it's so plentiful in the limestone we have. It is, and I know people who went there and the kids from out of town mm -hmm. got some really unique fossils to take oh, home yeah. with them. A lot of them, um, we call them brachiopods. Those are the ones that look like little clam shells. Those, I think, are some of the easier ones to find, but there are all kinds of different types of corals that are really easy to find as well. Uh, really neat uh, gifts you can bring home if you're yes. you know, out of town visiting. Say, this is what I found when I came to Alpina. And what are your hours? Uh, so right now our hours are a little bit different. So we'll open at 9.30, okay. usually, or um, sorry, uh, 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, uh, usually for our, uh, our beginning tours. Uh, what we call them are uh, self-guided tours. Okay. So if you do call and say you're coming, um, uh, you'll be signing up for a self-guided tour. Okay. Um, so 10 a.m. is when uh, we open for the day for that, and our last tour ends at 3.30. Okay. Um, so it's not quite as long as it used to be, but that gives us a little more time to clean the building. <coughs> Excuse me. And then on the weekend, um, Saturday is also uh, 10 a.m. to 3.30. Okay. Uh, and then Sunday is uh, 12 to four. Um, so I believe that's actually the same as it was before, but we still have some time in between where we okay. use to uh, clean the building. Well, I want to thank you very much for being here and thank everyone for keeping the museum up and running through all these tough times and we really appreciate all of your hard work. Well, thank you. We're excited to have people back. Thank you. I'll be right back following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Lucas Moquin from Thunder Bay Theatre. Good morning, Lucas. Good morning, Nancy. So Thunder Bay Theatre has been in our community doing wonderful productions for 51 years and for the first time we're halted due to the fire that happened at John A. Lau. That's right, yeah. Uh, this year is, uh, last year rather, in 2019 we celebrated our 50th anniversary uh, and uh, yeah, in year 51 we had to uh, shut down first uh, due to the pandemic um, and then uh, we had to postpone the spring season and then the summer season uh, and then inevitably we had to cancel uh, everything planned for the summer and the fall due to the the damage from the fire. So walk me through the damage. There is extensive water and smoke damage throughout the building. Uh, the lobby has been <laughs> destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> most everything in the lobby had to be thrown away. And that was brand new and just remodeled? It sure was. It was, uh, I, I don't even think it was quite a year old yet. Uh, but yeah, we had to completely ditch the lobby. Everything in the basement uh, mostly had to be thrown away. All the costumes and props costumes, and all that stuff. props, wow. uh, <laughs> archival photographs <clears throat> and tapes. Mm. Uh, even uh, little slides for like a carousel projector wow. had to be from the 60s had to be trashed. Wow. Yeah, and the uh, half of the apartments, three of the six apartments, sustained water damage, uh, two of them very extensively, and uh, smoke damage throughout the whole building, even in the dry spots. And you know the the good news is that no one was injured or hurt. Yes, that you know, is the both, both buildings. biggest thing that, that, that I and I'm sure John Benson and everybody at John A. Lau is thankful for that no one, no one got hurt. Everybody got out of the buildings in time. Well, you know, when you think about it, you know, John Benson's been known in our community. His generosity is known. Yes. It's overwhelming. He's helped the theater several times. Yeah, he's done so much for so many people and I'm very sad and hopefully he's covered with insurance mm. and you are covered but only we only don't know up how to far a, it's going to go. Right. We are covered uh, <coughs> up, and up to a certain point. And a lot of the things that were lost are kind of... Irreplaceable. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really almost impossible to uh, inventory and categorize everything that was in the building that had to be gotten rid of. It's, it's just invaluable. Wow. So you're in a holding pattern right now. So what are you doing while you're kind of in your holding pattern? Sure. So right now um, I am, I'm currently focusing on some other jobs that I have. I work for Thunder Bay Winery. Uh, I'm going to start picking up more hours there. Um, and uh, 
uh, hopefully I've got some other <coughs> things in the works. I also sit on a uh, volunteer activism committee called uh, Working for Justice Alpina. Find okay. us on Facebook. Uh, we have uh, lots of really exciting things coming up, ideas that we want to uh, you know, uh, bring to fruition projects that we have, and we're uh, we're we're still fresh and new, but we're uh, we're starting that ball rolling. Um, so uh, there there's other <laughs> ways that I'm going to be able to, you know, help the community and, and help build something here. Okay. And so when do you project that you'll be able to do a production again in a theater for the winter season? Do you think? At this point, I really can't say. We just <coughs> we just don't know enough yet. To make a determination right now, the priority is ju is is the building, is just getting the building uh, repaired, cleaned, etc. We we really can't think about that all that just yet. We have to get back on our feet, you know. Now, do you need volunteers? Uh, at some point, yes, I'm sure we will. Um, right now, we're still <coughs> in the process of uh, kind of just trying to clean up the building and make it a little bit safer. Okay. Uh, just because there is, um, you know, broken glass, uh, debris still so in some places, and, uh, you know, every time it rains, we get more water inside, oh so boy. we want to make sure that, you know, everything is clean and safe and, you know, everything like that. But, um, you know, once we actually start being able to assess and get, get a real handle on the situation, uh, I'm sure we'll be reaching out to the community for volunteer support if anyone is willing. Okay, now I know that you need um, some funding. So yeah. how can people help in that way? Uh, so there's a, there's a few options for folks who are interested in uh, donating money, although I will say, um, yes, the theater does need money, but also just in the back of your mind, keep John Benson in mind. Oh, yes. Um, visit JJ's a little more frequently than you might have. Uh, uh, I know he, I'm pretty sure he owns Bogart's yes. too, so maybe stop over there for a drink or two uh, that you might not normally. Uh, but uh, for Thunder Bay Theater, uh, what folks can do is just go right to our website. We have a, uh, uh, a fire fund. Uh, up there and also on our Facebook page as well and if you uh, if you do a little digging on our Facebook page also uh, a few uh, uh, alumni from Thunder Bay Theater last year uh, Annika Anderson, Desi Rodriguez, Sierra uh, Glosson and uh, Emily Ahrens put together a uh, uh, an independent GoFundMe oh, good. for the theater out of you know the kindness of their hearts they took the time to do that and we're very thankful for that Okay, so just kind of keep watching the news and, you know, yeah. letting people know, but don't plan on anything for this year. And when you have a, a need for volunteers, you'll put the word out and let people know, because I'm sure the community will jump in when you're ready to do all of those tasks and oh, yeah. get towards the end of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We will, we will keep the community updated uh, on pertinent things as we get that information. And uh, the, the outpouring of support from the community since the fire has been overwhelming it's it's been really magnificent it's been encouraging and you know when you think about it habitat for humanity had a horrible yeah, fire and the outpouring the community did oh, to yeah. them and now john and now the theater and yeah. i know that alpina will step up to the plate because they always do they always do and that's what they're good at okay so let's go back to your justice yeah thing again real quick we have about two minutes left so tell sure. me about that so uh uh during the uh, the the shutdown, the quarantine, and mm -hmm. everything, um, a few a few of a few like-minded <coughs> individuals in the community uh, really kind of spearheaded at first by Eric Peterson. He owns the Fresh Palette. Uh -huh. um, we 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 all thought, what the heck is going on? Nobody's nobody is coming together to try to. Uh, aggressively go for social justice issues, civil rights issues, LGBTQ plus issues, all of these uh, diversity and inclusivity problems that right. we have in this community. And we said, well, why don't we just do it? <laughs> so, so that's what we did. We started meeting. Um, we kind of uh, uh, narrowed down what we were going to do, how we were going to do it, etc. Came up with a you know a mission statement and all that. We put together a Facebook page, a private Facebook uh, group for us to communicate internally okay. and, a, and a public Facebook page that people can follow and like and uh, uh, yeah so we're we're uh, we're starting to get the ball rolling on a, f a few things that we want to initially start with okay we're out of time give me that Facebook page okay it's uh, working for justice Alpina 
Okay. If you just search that, you'll find the public page. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, we are got our fingers crossed that everything turns out perfect for the theater. Thank you very much, Thank Nancy. you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Mike Colleen, Director of Admissions at ACC. Welcome, Mike. Good to be here. Always nice to come in. And, uh, well, it's that time of year. It's August, so it's time to start thinking about going to school. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you do a great job of uh, getting people in our door. Um, and uh, how are things looking? And what are, what's the message you would like to convey to people who haven't already registered? Well, obviously, the big thing is, is that registration is still open. I mean, a lot of people think, and I've even received some phone calls or emails thinking, is it too late to register? Uh, no, classes start the week of August 31st, and I always tell people that registration is open until either the class is full or classes have begun. So um, right. lots of availability out there in a variety of different ways that we're doing our classes. So if you're at home thinking, um, you know, boy, what am I going to be doing in a couple of weeks? And if school is an option, you know, certainly give us a call, drop us an email, and our buildings are open now, or come on in, and we can certainly walk you through the process, get you started uh, in the right direction. Wonderful. And you touched on something I think is real, really a, a pertinent point is that we're offering courses in a variety of, I guess, modalities. Yeah. Well, we all know the world we're living in right yeah. now. So it's something that we've all adjusted on the fly. And uh, the college has done a great job coming up with what we call four different ways of um, instructional method delivery. Uh, one is, of course, online. A lot of people thinking about staying home, staying safe. That's sort of one of our things right now, stay safe, stay on track. Um, and so we, we've increased the number of our online classes. Um, and as our sort of student pace to where the student, you could do your homework at two in the morning if that worked mm -hmm. for you. The teacher will keep putting assignments out there. Uh, there will be deadlines and so forth to, to you know, make sure you're on time with. Um, that's one way. And then we're doing a number of remote classes. Now remote is different than online because remote means that you have set days and times that you need to log in and actually meet with your instructor virtually and your classmates. So if you had class face-to-face -face 8 to 9.30 on Monday and Wednesday, well, you're going to log into your computer 8 to 9.30 Monday and Wednesday and get that instruction. So that's the remote concept. We have some hybrid. A hybrid means you might go to class one day a week, and then the rest of it's online. So you get some of that interaction, that relationship building right. that we believe is so important um, at the college with your instructor. And then we have the traditional face-to-face -face classes. And one of the things that we've done, which is fantastic in my mind, and people are going to see it when they start walking around, is we've outfitted a lot of our classrooms with our virtual um, video conferencing software. So the back of the classrooms have like two 65-inch TVs with a camera. So if we have some class sizes that are a little larger and we can't fit all those people in the one class, we can take half of them in the room next door. The teacher can teach, and it's live. It's real time. The teacher can go back and forth through each room, and so that's another good option also. So a lot of variety of ways. Certainly, I bet there's something that would meet their needs. Yeah, that's remarkable uh, with that last uh, uh, way you were describing. The uh, social distancing has changed what we can do in right. the physical space we have. Um, right. This is not really driven home until you're responsible for making sure that people are six feet apart. And then a room that, ta that uh, had 30 capacity only will hold 13 or 14. Right, and so those are the rooms that we've split and stuff like that. And so they're out there. Uh, we've had a great group doing it. I know uh, Nick Breggy, our facilities guy, has been walking around with his six-foot tape measure yes. all over, uh, along with a couple faculty people, some of the people from our technology department, Sarah Burt, Mark Grunder, the instructional office, Deb Bear, Jackie Witter has been involved as well, um, making sure we're ready to go. And I believe we have a really solid plan in place to make it safe for everybody. Um, we all sort of know what the new rules are nowadays. Um, so as long as we all abide by them and we're going to be able to facilitate that, um, classes will be up and going here this fall. And some of our strong technical programs are, are available and still strong, UTT, concrete, nursing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that's where if people are looking, I always talk about those employability skills. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I call them terminal programs. And it's terminal in a sense that when you're done at ACC, you're going to work. You've got those employability skills. You're not interested in going to that four-year university. You just want to go to work. So you're right. Programs like concrete tech, automotive, welding, criminal justice, network administration in the computer-related yeah. areas, computer science, nursing, all of those are fantastic options. And uh, availability right here in Alpena 
and employment opportunities right here up in northern Michigan also. Absolutely, a very important point. Yeah. So if a student wanted to, to come, but money was an issue, um, uh, walk them through how that might resolve. Well, the first thing they're going to want to make sure they do is do the free application for federal student aid. That's where um, people find out if they're eligible for a Pell Grant. Those are the free federal dollars that often are based on like household income, number of dependents, number in college. Those are a couple of key indicators. And that's a free application that's online. This is the FAFSA. The FAFSA, yeah, yeah. the FAFSA. Um, and a lot of people wonder, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a daunting, it's a little bit of a challenging form. You gotta give information and so forth. But as mentioned, our offices are open, the financial aid office is open, come on in and call. It's not too late, but it is something you're gonna wanna get going on. Because when you do do the FAFSA, it takes three to five days for your information to get to us. So even if you did it today, we may not get it till Thursday or Friday this right. week. And then we're, our time window is getting short. So don't delay on that. Um, there's opportunities out there, scholarship opportunities, um, student loans, all that stuff. We can help you through the process to make it a reality for you. You're right. Uh, Pell Grants are obtained by a, a, a pretty large percentage of our students. We do, yeah. And those grants run, it, because it's a grant, it doesn't need to be paid back. And they run about oh, over $6,000 six this year. Yeah, if year. you're eligible for a full Pell Grant, it is over 6000 So if you're an in-district student, that would pay for pretty much almost everything you want to do here at ACC for, for a year. It would. So pursuing uh, the FAFSA, figuring out how to fill it out, filling it out, getting it done and submitted, is uh, critical. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's something they don't want to delay on because if not, you got to pay for your classes and then if your financial aid comes in later, it is reimbursable or retroactive, but you've got that upfront money. And the uh, last piece, well, we've got about uh, 20 seconds left. Anything that you would like to, any word you'd like to get out to the viewers? Well, the biggest thing is, is that, you know, don't delay. I mean, I know a lot of people are wondering really what the fall is going to look like, not just in the K-12s, but even with us. But I believe we at ACC are prepared. We're ready with a variety of options. Uh, and just give us a call. Go to our website. We've got all this information on our website where you can apply for admission and contact us. Uh, or just come on in. We're open now, uh, 8 to 4, 8 to 4.30, and uh, we'll certainly help you take care of Mike, thank you uh, for your work in admissions and everything you do at the college. Very significant. Thanks. And uh, thank you folks for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.